Welcome to Conversation with H, and we have another incredible guest with us today. She is a praise dancer, a singer-songwriter who's given us songs like Fall Afresh and Surrounded. She's preached all around the world. She does this amazing 5 a.m. prayer. If you haven't seen it, you need to go check it out. Wake up, put your alarms on, and make sure you go check out her 5 a.m. prayer. Before some of you even saw her, you heard her on the Donny McClurkin Live in London album singing Sunday. Was that, wow, was that, was that, was wow. that the note? Definitely not. <laughs> She loves music, shopping, and to have fun. The queen of working silence and let your success make noise for you. The sister, the daughter, the child of God, my fellow hay fever sufferer, the superb and amazing. <laughs> That's Arthur. a good one. <laughs> and Miss Juanita Francis, how are you doing? I'm here? good. How are you? I'm That's good. brilliant. That is actually brilliant. <laughs> so, what, a, what a bio. They need to send this to my preaching engagement. I've heard that. <laughs> so, for those who don't know who you are, who is. Winita Francis and who's Alda Winita and are they both kind of... They're the same person, believe it or not, just facets of me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Winita is um, a lover of God, mm -hmm. a lover of people, um, a lover of food, <laughs> <laughs> a lover of shopping. No, I am a uh, daughter to incredible parents, mm -hmm. Bishop John Francis and co-pastor Winnie Francis. Obviously, I call them mum and dad. Mm -hmm. um, I am a sister to two amazing sisters. Mm -hmm. Uh, to Lisa and Carissa, who hate the public eye, so they're probably going to get me for calling their names. <laughs> um, so don't follow them on social media, they don't want it. Uh, <laughs> um, I am a auntie, a godparent, no, I'm not auntie, well, I am, because I've got mm. a dog, a nephew, it's amazing Baymax. Um, but, you know, um, that's why I said I'm an auntie. But, um, no, I'm a, yeah, like I said, sister, I am a godmother, I am a, well, I was a youth pastor, I'm a leader of a church, an elder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just, I'm me. Mm. <laughs> I always find this question hard, but really? yeah, I'm me. So why do you find the question hard though? Because I feel like it's so weird to like try and describe yourself. I feel like I'm more of a person that's like, just get to know me. Got you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah and yeah. then you'll see who I am. I'm, I'm a goofball. <laughs> People find me funny, I still don't get why. Probably because I say stuff that to them is funny and it's not, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So since you're trying to get to know you and you're yeah. saying that's the best way, what was early family life like? Oh, early family life. I was very loud, very confident, mm -hmm. very vibrant. Yeah. I think we all were. My, my, my parents really taught us to be um, very confident in ourselves, leaders, very outspoken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> we should have been quiet. <laughs> um, I always had an opinion on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I get that from my dad. He won't own it, though, but <laughs> definitely do. Um, always honest, mm -hmm. transparent. Um, early life looks like school, mm -hmm. uh, chilling with my sisters, watching TV, wasn't allowed to watch anything like that was like seemed witchcraft yeah, or yeah. anything like that. So I never watched Sabrina Teenage yeah. Witch, I never watched any of those stuff. <laughs> yeah. I remember I tried to sneak to watch it and yeah, I didn't, didn't You watch. tried to sneak to watch the Sabrina Teenage Witch? Yeah, because I felt left out. At school everyone was talking about, it's like, did you watch that episode? And it's like, no, actually my dad thinks it's demonic, you know? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't always go over well at school. <laughs> so speaking about that, what was the kind of what was the impact of your parents being in ministry in like in early family life? Because you just kind of spoke about it there a little bit. Yeah, we were allowed to do quite a bit of things. I mean, it wasn't to the point where we couldn't do anything. It yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. that deep, but there were a lot of like what we'd consider normal things mm -hmm. to us at that at that age that we weren't allowed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we my dad wasn't my mum and dad weren't huge and I was sleeping over it. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's yeah. homes and things like that. I mean my first sleepover was my own. <laughs> so that should tell you. But like I think when you get older you kind of realise why they did certain things and you hear some yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the horror stories, you understand why they were so protective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So explain to me this, you know, transition from wanting to be an air hostess. Okay. You're a praise dancer. You did your to research. Singer, just to actually preacher. crazy. Okay, so I used to travel a lot with my okay. dad. Obviously, he was in ministry yeah. and I was pretty young and my mum used to work full time. So I did a lot of travelling with my dad very young. Yeah. Um, and with both of them. Um, and I love flying. I still to this day yeah, love yeah. flying. I mean, I sleep more now because <laughs> getting older. <laughs> oh, something happens when you turn 30, I promise you. They just don't warn you. But no, for real. Uh, I loved flying and I just loved the uniform. Like, I'm not talking about now because it's a bit more chill nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the is back then they had like all these badges. Yeah, you could the collect yeah, them. Yeah, 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 you could yeah. go and see the, you know, cockpit, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that. And I just loved doing this. I thought that was really fun. <laughs> that was the seller. <laughs> that was the seller really badly. It was. I was like, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to be like, your exes are here, here and here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> 
And then I found out that you had to like swim a lot and there was a lot involved. And I was like, yeah, that's oh, not going to happen. Oh, it was a swimming that, that... I could swim, but I was like, who's got time to be swimming? I think like the test, you've got to like swim with clothes on yeah, for like yeah, a yeah. long time. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So how do you transition from air hostess to them praise dancer? Well, I always loved dance. Like, okay. I was always... In respect of being an air hostess, I always loved dance. I thought I was going to be a cog for Chris Brown. That didn't quite work out. Maybe if you hear me one day, just, you know, hook, hook me up. But no. um, I thought I was going to be a, like a famous choreographer. So I, was, I would dance everywhere and anywhere. That was really? my passion. Still is. I yeah. love it. Um, still find me every now and again getting a little jiggy with it. But not to the same <laughs> level. Because like these bones, they move different when you turn 20, 25. It just gets a little bit crazy. Not so, the bones. It does. I used to be very flexible. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Could do, you know, high kicks, splits and all that. No, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so where does singer and preacher then come into does, does preacher come from seeing your dad and actually your no it was the opposite i had no desire to preach zero zilch i told everyone i would never preach none didn't didn't want anything with it to me i saw a lot growing up so i yeah, saw what yeah, my yeah. dad had to go through just to do what he loved um, and what he did so well and i was like yeah you can have it it's like someone going you know, here's a list to sign up for suffering. Sign yeah. here. No one's going to, like, why would wow. you, why, in your right mind, would you sign up? Mm, so, for me, it was like, nah, I'm good. It was actually through dance. I did a dance conference and I was having a Bible study with my best friend, um, one of my best friends at the time, Tiffany. Yeah. And we were talking, we were both in dance ministry and her mum overheard us and was like, oh, yeah, you're both going to speak next year. And I was like, yeah, I'm not. I didn't think it was serious. The next year, the invitation came through and was like, oh, we'd love her to do an exhortation. And they were like 15 minutes. Somehow between the invitation and when I got there, it turned into 45 minutes. And I was very displeased. I hated that. I still don't like watching that sermon. Everyone was like, mm. I can't believe this is your first time speaking. I was like petrified. But what changed my mind was at the end of that um, ministration, there was a lady who checked herself out of hospital. She had kidney failure. Mm -hmm. She got healed in the service. And hearing that testimony come back, I was like, well, maybe it isn't that bad. Because mm. I love people and I love seeing them get what they need. And I think that drew me more than the actual preaching itself. Mm. Um, and obviously, I was a love of the word. That didn't change. But I just was like, yeah, I don't know about this, this, this kind of cost of the call cool type vibe. So, mm. yeah, I started at 15, kind of dropped off when I got 16, 18, because obviously you get to school and you kind of realise there's other things that are a little bit more fun. Mm -hmm. um, but God just kept prodding at my heart and it was yeah something that just had to happen so how did you find that balance in terms of like loving jesus and then also trying to like fit into the school and college environment how was what was that like for i you? don't think i ever did i felt like god made it that my circle was really hard to fit in with i mean i'm i still talk to a lot of them now and probably they look at me like now we understand you a lot more but mm. back then even though i was in what they considered the cool group yeah um i still felt very isolated i felt like as much as I was there, mm. but I didn't know if people really understood me. I felt left out of a lot of things because there were some things that I just, you know, like couldn't what? do. Like, you know, there was a lot of parties that I got invited to and I would feel uncomfortable, even though I would be happy I was there and it was cool. And, you know, at the time, you know, there may be a guy that you liked mm. or guys that liked certain girls and stuff like that. But I'd always feel the oddball, even though I was still there. Wow. Um, I, as much as I would try to fit in, it just never really worked. So how do you transition all of this we talked about air hostess we talked about praise dancer <laughs> we talked about preacher we haven't talked about singer yeah how did i get into that how did you get into that oh that was actually a really interesting experience so i would say it came twofold the first mm. thing was i got a prophetic word i was in ppp i haven't actually told this story but i should start at the beginning because normally we don't have a lot of time so i'm going to give you like the real <laughs> yeah. deal so i'm sitting in um, our PPP conference, I wasn't a praise and worship leader at the mm -hmm. time. I was sitting, this was the very first time, sitting behind a prophet, and I can't remember his name, it's gone right out of my head, but either way, he was in front of me, I was in the second row, and um, we were waiting for service to start, and he mm. turned around and he was just like, you know, I feel like the Lord is gonna um, call you to singing. And I was like, oh no, you're off. Like, I actually said that to him, it's really bad. And I did apologize, by the way, guys. But I actually was like, yeah, you're off. I was like, no. And they were like, no, he's like, no, I really feel it strong that God is going to open some doors with singing. I was like, maybe you mean dancing. Mm -hmm. I thought, like, let me help him out with this prophetic <laughs> word, like, <laughs> guide him in the right direction, you know. And 
I told you I was outspoken, guys. But yeah, so I was like, yeah, no. And he was like, no. He's like, God is going to call you to singing. And God said to tell you that because you don't believe, he's going to prove to you that, mm. you know, this is what God is going to use you in. And he said to me, um, what will take people years to do, you will do it almost, it will feel overnight. Like doors that people wouldn't be exposed to or given at the time um, in your ministry, you will see it happen very quickly. Mm. So I was like, okay, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to just tell my parents, this guy is off, do not give him a mic. Mm. He is, like, chatting absolute foolishness. Anyway, some, I want to say a couple of years passed, I saw um, Pastor McClurkin. Mm -hmm. We were, he was preaching out, and we were at the Marriott, and it's by a bridge, and I can't remember the name of the bridge, but there's a Marriott by the bridge. Mm -hmm. And we were getting a burger. Mm -hmm. And let's just say I didn't eat that burger because he was asking me how's music, how's singing. I was like, Uncle Don, you know I don't sing um, anymore. And he was like, took out his phone and reads out um, Second Timothy. And that got the gift that's given to you by the laying hands of the presbytery. And he was like basically rebuking me and saying like, you know, how can you not operate in a gift that God is giving you and cords? And I felt really convicted to the point I didn't eat my burger and I'm a foodie. So you know if I didn't mm -hmm. eat my burger, it's real. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd be nice and join the choir, hear my words. I thought I'd be nice and join the choir. I thought, okay, if I join the choir, maybe God will just give me a break. Yeah, yeah. And long story short, I ended up leading worship for our School of the Prophets because when we do School of the Prophets, when you finish, you have to give back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, my mentor, Sonia Hogg, who was mentoring me with the prophetic, was like, I want you to lead worship. And I was like, why? I was like, I don't even sing like mm. that. Anyway, I would lead worship. I would literally want to pee every single time because it was that deep. Like I was like, oh, oh my God, I'm gonna wet myself. Um, and then what happened was we had a revival and all the worship leaders got sick and I ended up leading worship at a Walthamstow location. That was the first location I ever led worship at. Walthamstow location. And the Minister of Music um, at the time, Nicky Brown came up to me and he was like, oh, um, you've got to lead worship. And I was like, haha, that's funny. He was like, no, no one's turned up. You've got to lead worship. Everyone's, I was like, where's this person? And he's like, oh, they're sick. This one can't come. This one's... So now I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'll never forget, I turned Alpha and Omega and the power of God came down. And that's literally the entrance that I got into leading worship. Mm. Um, and then I met Miranda Curtis, which mm. is my mentor. And I wrote a song because basically Dion Kipping came to the UK and he asked me to open up for him. Mm. And I was completely shocked because I wasn't an artist like that back then. I didn't even have stems. Right? <laughs> it was real. Um, but here it is, God opening doors, things happening quicker, like the word was. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take it as that yeah, straight yeah. away. So anyway, I opened up. I had someone record the song. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to play it to her um, and see what she thinks. Mm -hmm. So we're on our way back from Benita Jones, who back then was Benita Washington's yeah, yeah, yeah. live recording in Alabama. And I said, I want to play you a song. She played the song, which was Fall Afresh, mm -hmm. and a couple of others. And she was like, this is really good. And before I knew it, she was calling her producer and was like, hey, I've got my mentee here. I think you guys should do work on an EP with her. Mm. It's like praise and worship style. I want you to take care of her. I'm sitting in the car like, all you was meant to do was just listen to the yeah, track and tell me it was good, that's it. Like, that's all I... The joke was I was planning to give her the song. And that's actually how I ended up with an EP, ended up doing the live recording that day, and not going for it, it was her, all her. She literally told, gave me two weeks to talk to my dad and I took two weeks to talk to him. <laughs> I waited two weeks. Um, my dad was all on board. Before I knew it, I was on a flight to uh, Philadelphia to go to Delaware. What? Yeah, to trial this out. So, trialed out. I came in and on the way, my dad was like, do you know who's paying for your record? And I was like, no, I don't know, actually. I was like, let me read this paperwork that he's given me. Next thing I know, it's not, it's not only shocking that Dana Saray, who literally produced one of my favourite artists, Ty Tribbett, at the time when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But then I look and Paris Bowens is on it, and Patrick Tribbett, and Morgan Turner, and I'm like, what? Me, who doesn't even know if I can sing yet, has got these A-listers on my record. This doesn't even make sense. So I get there and I'm completely starstruck. Like, my dad is nudging me, like, can you act like you belong, please? Because I'm like, oh my God, he's <laughs> like losing it um, and then I hear him playing Fall Afresh and I remember I just had tears in my eyes because I couldn't believe it and then the prophecy came back to me what would take people years to do God will do it and it will feel like overnight and then before you know it Fall Afresh came out bear in mind I had many <laughs> meltdowns in the studio because mm. 
I feel God was using that to heal me because I just really didn't know my identity and God was using that to kind of really go, hey, there's so much more to you and don't allow people to put you in a box. Um, Because I was always taught like, and grew up in an environment where you had to pick a gift almost. Mm -hmm. Like you weren't a preacher and a singer. It was like one one or the other. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how am I supposed to do all of this? Um, And we put out Fall Afresh and within seven hours it was number one. And I just couldn't stop crying. I remember on live, someone had commented and was like, your single's number one. I was like, no way, cancel the live. Went to go and check and just couldn't stop bawling in the hotel. I was crying, 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 because we had a conference. And again, that prophecy came back to me and I was like, oh my God, this is what he said. So obviously by that point, I went and messaged him and apologised. <laughs> for getting it wrong. And actually he was right. And then, yeah, doors just kept opening and I did Daystar, I did Potter's House um, with Bishop Jakes. You know, Bishop Jakes came up to me and my dad's relationship with him. And I know a lot of people think he opened that door, but he didn't. My dad was as shocked as me. <laughs> We, he came over to a service and he was like, oh, I heard you've got a song that's like my book, Saw. I was like, oh, I got my wings, yeah. He was like, I want to do something for you. I want to bless you. I want you to come and sing for us. And um, yeah, so I ended up at Port's house and doors and doors and doors. So hold on. <laughs> and I didn't want it, imagine. <laughs> you didn't want this door? No. And you were trying to fight it? Yes. And what was key to me and what he said was God was using all these times that he was kind of in the studio and fighting against this to heal you, Mm. but to also show you your identity. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. The one thing I would have never expected him to use. Not even that. The one thing you didn't even want to do. No. More than preaching, I never wanted to sing. Because I grew up around singers. So everyone in my family sings. And incredible. I can hear it. I know. I used to be mad at a bum note in verse one, all the way at the end of the song. I'd be sitting there irritated, like I can't believe I sang that in verse one. Under there. <laughs> and everyone else would be like, "What is your problem?" Like it was great. That's how I am. Mm. Uh, probably get that from my dad too. But that's your strive for excellence. Yeah, at the same absolutely, one hundred percent. Did you feel the pressure of like growing up as a PK? Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't feel it straight away because I didn't even know what PK was. Mm. My parents were really good in our early years not to really, really feel it. I think when we started getting into, like, secondary school or the end of primary school, then it kind of became apparent, like, oh, we can't do what everyone else does. If we do it, we get in trouble. Mm. That person doesn't, you know. It was difficult, like, but my parents were very good at... They didn't let anyone just tell us off and things like that. Like, you know, back in the day, I know in my dad's era, you know, anyone could beat you and things like that. No mm-hmm. one could do that with us. Mm. So um, that was the plus. But yeah, there was a lot of pressure to be a certain way. Like, I remember he used to come up to me, like, you're going to be a preacher like your dad. Mm. And I was like, why do I have to do that? Like, what if I don't do that? Mm. You know, are you still going to accept me? Are you still going to be okay that, mm. you know, if I am, you know, I can be anointed and not preach. Um, and I think that's sometimes the danger with PKs. If you're not careful, people will try and map out your destiny. The reason why I asked that question so quickly behind the other one, it might seem like it's a bit um, disjointed, but we talked about identity. Yeah. So when we're talking about pressure of you being a PK, people can also, as you just mentioned, yeah. align their identity to what their parents do. If they're yeah. PKs or if they're, they're GKs or, yeah. or whatever it might be, they align their destiny to, oh, granddad used to preach, so... That's what, that's and what that's people, how people get disappointed. Because mm. if God hasn't called you to it, you're now following a path that actually he may not have put out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And expecting favour and doors on something that actually he may not be behind. Mm. And then you get a lot of bitter PKs because they followed a route that actually God wasn't even behind it. Mm. And I think the pressure that normally comes is from outside. Yeah, it's, more so, yeah. It's, it's not so much inside of oh i expect you to be this from inside the house it's normally from the people outside like oh you preached that one time oh you're gonna be yeah like your dad or like your mum. yeah um how do you move forward in that that pressure yourself away from what your parents told you how do you move past that pressure that's probably still there today i think it's it when i finally figured out who i was it's mm. been confident in that because people are going to be people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. how many times have we looked at someone on, on a TV program and said they should have? Or, you know, it's a natural response. I think when you understand that majority don't do it with ill intent, mm. you can know how to respond. So now when people say to me, oh, you're going to do this, I'm like, no, if that's if God allows. Mm. Like, I'll correct them. And then they kind of realise, like, oh, 
yeah, that isn't my choice to make yeah, yeah. or that isn't something that I should be putting that kind of pressure. And then I think education, because mm. some people don't know they're doing it. That's so true. You know, some people, it's natural. It's, you know, like, especially the mothers, they're mm. going to do that because that's how they grew up. That's, that's how they are. Mm -hmm. But if you help them to understand the pressure that you put on them, mm. then most people will kind of adjust. Mm. I want to stick on the kind of theme of identity because mm -hmm. you gave me this amazing story on Fall Afresh. But after Fall Afresh, you didn't want to sing no more. Is that correct? Yeah. So this 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 is the this, this is what you're telling me. We're going off what you're just telling you. Yeah. Great story on Fall Afresh. Amazing. I know it's mad. You would have never that. thought I'd wanted to give up on that. And yeah. then all of a sudden, I don't want to do it no more. I'm hearing you don't want to do it no more. What what's happened? How do we get to that? How do we get from starstruck <laughs> with Nita Francis to I don't want to sing no more with Nita Francis? All right. I'm a very transparent person, yeah. so this might <laughs> this might cause some views to <laughs> Oh, to rise, but I'm going to be honest, yeah. um, because I think it's important. So when I started this out, as I said, it was the word coming to life, which was things that would take people years to do, mm -hmm. um, you would do it overnight, it would seem. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel like God has just favoured you. Mm -hmm. So when Fall of Fresh came out, a lot of people were upset. A lot of industry people were very upset. Because of that prophecy of what's going to take them years to do. Yeah, and not just that. I was told I was a sellout because I used American musicians over UK musicians and producers and stuff. But people and, don't know the story behind that. Right. Like... So a lot of people didn't wait to find out how it happened mm. and the fact that I actually had nothing to do with the process. It was my mentor being a great mentor, which mm. was, I see a gift, I'm going to nurture it and I'm going to use what, what she I did. have, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is she's American, so she's going to use Americans mm. um, to make it happen. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a really difficult season because there were a lot of people that I was very close to who I ended up losing friends out of whispers, Chinese whispers, wow. out of people saying things out of jealousy or ill intent. Um, and yeah, I was just like, I'm good, you know? It's not that deep. I never wanted to do it in the first place. So you went back to where you were So I went back to where I was. Um, I think obviously when I did... When I did Daystar, it, you know, it was hard because I guess there's... And I get it. I really do get it. If you've been grinding in something and it's not produced the fruit that you expect and mm. you watch someone who's, like, not even been here mm. in your mind 10 minutes and she's getting some of maybe the platforms that you wish, I can understand that. Um, but I always say to my dad, I feel like he grew us up very different in that, to me, if I feel like I'm ever jealous of someone, it makes me strive harder. Mm -hmm. I don't resent someone because they've got a platform that yeah. I want. In fact, I was taught, serve way, your way up. So for me, if I see something that someone has that I'm like, oh, I really want to attain that, I go and glean, I go yeah. and serve. So for me, how I got connected to Miranda was in my environment, I felt like the people I tried to glean mm -hmm. and pull from didn't give me the space to. They wouldn't mm -hmm. even let me near or... They were coveting me. So mm. for me, it was like, you know what? She's given me access. She's answering my questions about how to lead worship, how to manage people who are older than me. Mm. And she invited me to a conference. I came and she let me sit under her. Mm. And I'm never going to be Miranda Curtis, but I understood that I wanted some things that she was able to do effortlessly. And I recognised that, according to scripture, there's normally two ways that you could ever receive mantles or, you know, have access to how someone does something and that is serving mm -hmm. or you pay the price. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm smart enough not to pay the price, so I'm going <laughs> to just serve. How about that? You know? So, for me, I understand why people end up there, but I think it was just hurtful because for me it was like, if you only got to know me and understand, I'm the type of person I will open the door for you as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't just have to be me. So, for me, I was seen as, I'm getting America to look at the UK as an industry where they weren't doing that before. Mm. If you ask the average artist in America, they couldn't list any UK artists whatsoever, but we can list all of them. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, hey, by doing this, I'm getting their eyes I'm over sh here. I'm shining the light. Which makes us all win at the same time, but I felt like a lot of people couldn't see that. Mm. Um, so I lost a lot of friends. And then also in America, I lost a lot of friends because I became competition. Wow. You know, because now here it comes. This girl's come out here with a number one in her first single, breaking records. I have people say, oh, she only got a number one because it's not hard to get one over here. <laughs> I, if I tell you the stuff that people posted, said, indirected, it was insane. And I was just like, I don't need this. I don't need extra stress. I don't want to feel like I don't know who likes me and who doesn't. I don't want to walk around in the UK on eggshells. Mm. I'm good. So I was like, y'all can have it. Bye. Yeah, I know. It's a lot to take in. Now, you know what it is? I'm, that's, 
it's in my head. You've just all all what's happened is you've you've followed through on the prophecy that's been put on your life. Okay. You've just done it. Sometimes willingly, most of the time. <laughs> Unwillingly. <laughs> Unwillingly. <laughs> but you've done it. So then what happens is you get what's been prophesied on your life. People then look at you like, no, 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 how did she get there? That don't make no sense. And I can imagine the conversations, the things being said, not even just American musicians, people probably talking about, oh, it's only because her dad's this. Yeah, and this, that this was and, another one. And yeah. this, this and that. And it's only because she went here and this and that. And it's just like, people don't have a broader view apart from, I see your success and I don't like it because it's not my success. Mm -hmm. Rather than looking at it like, I see your success is going to bring us success. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's just... It's scary mm -hmm. because you were already in a position where you didn't want to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you find your identity, you start to heal through that process. How does those kind of things affect you? At the time, it was dreadful. Uh, I remember I did the live recording release, so EP came out and I had to bring people over because when I try to use people over here, you're getting a realty. Um, people are overcharging. And it was just crazy. And I was like, for the money I'm going to spend, I might as well bring the team over. Yeah, so yeah. brought the team over. Um, and I guess some people were upset because they weren't on a guest list. They felt mm -hmm. they should have been invited. It was very traumatic. Like, I spent most of that week crying. Like, my producer was, like, very concerned about where my headspace was going to be when I did the recordings. Do you mean the week of the yeah, recording? Yeah, I spent most of it crying. I had someone, I don't, well, I have an idea of who it was, but I don't know for a yeah, fact. yeah, yeah. But yeah, someone had taken my flyer for it and put um, cancelled over it and sent it out. So one of my friends sent me was like, yo, is your event cancelled? I'm confused. And I was like, no, it's not. And I'd like seen my flyer with like the big word cancelled like, over whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was mad. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. What are you telling me here? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I know I smile a lot, but I've been through it. <laughs> I've been through it. This yeah. is not normal? No, it's not normal. I've never seen anyone do that to someone's flyer, unless it's the actual, you know, promoters yeah. themselves. Yeah. I got it sent back to me. It was like, yeah, it's all over Snapchat. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? And so I had to go and do a video and explain to people, it's not cancelled. If you've seen this flyer, it's fake. Like, please. Because, you know, that affects ticket sales. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was rough. So I think after all of that, I was like, it's not worth it. In my mind, it was like, this is not worth it. I just need to be at peace. And right now I don't feel peace. I feel stressed. I feel like I'm walking at eggshells and I don't want to treat people who are nice and who do mean me well with resistance because mm. I don't know, are you one of them? Yeah. Jeez. You know, it brings about paranoia. And I was like, I don't live like that. So yeah, I just said after about a year of it, to my mentor, I was like, I'm done. I'm just going to leave worship at church. So how do we get to Surrounded? What's the story behind that? Well, in between that, my mentor is not having it. She is not, She's not accepting. there's no such thing as a quit. <laughs> I remember she literally said, did God tell you that? And I was like, no, but I'm doing it anyway. And um, I realized that, I guess we could say we had a little bit of deliverance in her hotel room, mm. um, because I realized that a lot of my route to rejection and stuff like that stemmed from what happened to me when I was molested, mm. because the individual that did it was in music as well. And just some how I perceived wow. music, grading, just a lot of things yeah, yeah, yeah. had added to what I was already dealing with. So I had to deal with the source in mm. order to even heal from what was happening there and then. Yeah. Um, went through that process, went back to counselling, mm -hmm. prayed a lot. Um, and I was like, God, you're going to have to show me me. Because I think the biggest issue was it's easy for you to think that what people are saying and doing are right if you don't know who you are. Mm. And although I was healing, I guess I hadn't healed enough to deal with that kind of resistance. Mm. So when Savannah came up, obviously we were, in, we, were, we were just before the pandemic. Mm. I had my first ever event called All Out Worship, mm. which is about to happen again, so get some tickets. Um, and um, yeah, I was scared because mm. I've never had an event. I was like, is people gonna come? Because I'm not really loved here. <laughs> You know, I don't know. Um, we sell out and I get sick with a throat infection that I didn't realise at the time until afterwards my doctor was like, you're insane for singing through. I think it was like strep throat or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't know I had it. So I was really sick that week. I remember the night before I was like, please, man, I don't want to sing. I don't feel good. And she was not having it. She was like, these people have come to see you. And I was like, no, they haven't. They come to see you. 
And anyway, sang for and I was like, oh, I need a new song. Mm. So I remember I had Surrounded, which was a devotional song that yeah. I wrote to God in prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sang it for my mum's woman's brunch. Yeah. That was the only time I'd ever sang it. And I sang it at the piano. First time I ever playing the piano live. And I cried for all of it. It was a mess. Um, because I was still going through a lot of pain. Mm. Um, and on top of that, there was another situation that was also bringing me pain. Mm. Um, so I sang the song All That Worship and everyone jumped on it. And so when the event had finished and was DMing me on social media, like, yo, I need that song surround it. I look for it on social media, I can't find um, it. Uh, iTunes, I can't find it. Mm. I'm like, it's not out. <laughs> it's not even a song. Yeah, I just yeah. did something so I could get through the day. Mm. Um, and then my dad called me that night and was like, Winita, so that song you sang, so I thought you were talking about Miranda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, no, the one you sang. It was like, some about a pillar. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, how comes you, how comes I don't know about this song? Your mum was singing the words. I was like, oh, I sang it at the women's brunch, but you obviously are not a woman, so you weren't there. <laughs> he's like, that's a hit. That's a hit, Winita. That's like full of fresh. No, you got to record this. He goes, if you don't do it, I'm going to record it. And I was <laughs> like, like take your song. <laughs> so it was like overwhelming. I was like, Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Because, again, it was like, I've got to think about doing this all again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how people are going to react. Again, nah. So then I was like, well, maybe I'll pitch it to Miranda. I was like, Miranda's doing a recording. Let me ask her. Mm. But it didn't go with her theme. So Dad was like, you need to record this song. I'm telling you, you need to record this song. So we're in a pandemic now. Mm. And I'm like, I'm not recording no song in no pandemic. Like, do you know how much this is gonna like cost? This don't make no sense. So I went live and someone asked about the song again. Mm. And I was like, I'm an independent artist. These things cost money. Yep. So I'm on a small Instagram live. There was probably about 30 people on the live. Mm. People were like, I will say, I will say, I will say, I will say. I came off the live and I thought, you know, people say stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, get... okay, I'll put my bank account on the live. While I'm talking, I see the notifications coming up on the top of my screen. This person said £50, this person said £100. When I came off the last one, I said £1,000. I did not pay for Surrounded. Surrounded was funded by people who believe in me, literally. I probably paid a grand towards that single myself. Everything else came from people. How does that feel then, the overwhelming support, considering what you went through for all of It was Russia? healing. It was exactly what I needed. It was in that moment God said to me, you're focusing on the wrong people. Focus on the people that actually do believe in you, that need your music. Like, it was to the point that those people felt, I need this song so much, I will part with my income. That's crazy. Because that's not much things I will part my income with. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's real love. And that became the healing process. So I was like, well, they gave, now I've got to do it. I was in a five-year prayer. Someone came off the five and prayer, messaged me and said, the Lord told me to sew into you how much you need for the rest of the record. How much you need for the rest of the record? And I wanted strings, but I was scared to say the truth of what I needed, because I was like, they're going to be intimidated and be like, no, because it was like 3,000 something. Um, and I wanted the strings. And the host Spirit said, add the number for the strings. And I was like, it's already 2,000. Like, that's going to be feisty. And God said, obey me and do it. She paid the first 1,500. She said, I'll complete the rest in the next week. And I had everything to do with um, strings. And that's how I also recorded Abbey Road Studios, which I got favour for too. Yeah. But that was the biggest healing I needed. And after that, I was like, I don't care what people say at this point. What did it show yourself about yourself? It showed me that people saw value that I didn't even see. Because, again, people willing to spend a grand, mm. 2,000, 3,000, on a record and trust me by sending the money for nothing in return. Now, I chose after that to bring them along the journey. So they got to come in the session. Mm. I got them to talk to my shoot and my producer. They were able to hear the song before anyone else heard the song. Mm. Um, I brought them on the journey and they were really grateful for that. They had a copy of the song before anyone else did. Um, but it was the fact that they sent their money in absolute total faith mm. that I was going to deliver a single. To me, mind blowing. Still is, still gets me every time. So yeah, that was what I needed. So it's like you've gone full circle. Mm. Yeah. Because you went back to, you started off not wanting to do it, got the prophecy, and then the, the steps and the stages start to fall in line. 
you release Fall Afresh, then you feel probably even worse than you felt when you didn't want to do it. Because yeah. I was just like, this is just, this, this is what I didn't want to do. Yeah, <laughs> literally. That is exactly what I said to God. Like, uh, exhibit A, you know? <laughs> like, you go back to for that, real. and then as you continue to heal a bit, heal more and more, you get to surround it, and the support shows you even more of a healing than what you was getting on Fall Afresh. Yeah. It showed me the support, and the song itself was birthed out of my actual my actual abuse, my molestation. So if you've watched the music video, you'll see the, the newspapers. Those are real newspapers. They're not fake. Those are the only thing that was real. Everything else we had to embed and yeah, make, yeah, yeah, make yeah. it make sense for the, rec uh, for the uh, film, for the video. But those newspapers were actually clippers my mum saved. And she saved them because she said, one day you're going to testify on this. And she kept them. Now, at the time, I was like, why are you keeping this? This is yeah, yeah, awful. Why would you keep yeah, yeah. something like that? But she knew later in life, which is exactly what happened. I was like, I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to actually take a risk and show everyone my story. Because I think people always see the end or, like, you know, they see you on Potter's house and they think you just got there. And mm. it's like, you're missing all the steps in between the pains, the tears, the moments. And I can, I'm telling you, talk to anyone who's known, famous, got there no one's ever really arrived overnight most people you just don't know their story yeah yeah yeah, 100 percent. this is an amazing conversation just because one of the things that i really like about you is you're always putting yourself out there using your gifts as god has tried to intend for them to be used yeah but you hate attention <laughs> yeah how do you battle with using the gifts how they need to be used versus how you feel i'm a lot better at it now because I reckon, okay, I'm gonna tell you what got me together. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it, but I'm gonna tell you what got me together. God said to me one time, I was hiding some of the things that were happening in my life because of how people reacted mm -hmm. the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God said to me, it was two things. I was hiding it and I was feeling like, oh, why can't I have done it like this? Or why can't you have done it like that? Mm. And God said to me, you're ungrateful. And I'm like, well, that's a bit mean. <laughs> like, and he was like, he said, what you're like is someone, it's like you go and get a gift for someone, you give them a gift, mm. and they say, oh, I wish you could have got me that. Mm. How do you feel when, I'm like, well, they're rude. They ain't getting another gift from me. He says, and that's what you do every single time. And he said, and when you refuse to show your gift and hide your gift, you're ashamed of me. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one doing it. Mm. When you hide it, you, that means you think you're behind it. Wow. And at that point, I realised, and I was saying it to my dad a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, normally I will hide or I'll feel like people are going to think I'm bragging. Mm. Actually, I am, but just not on me. I'm bragging on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the times is, is how we view it. But I can't, I can't hide because your lens is skewed. Yeah. I have to understand that I don't represent you. I mm -hmm. represent him. And the moment I hide, I take away from his glory. How is he meant to get glory if no one knows what's happening? And so that's what really helped me get better at sharing what God is doing in my life with not the thought of, what is people going to say? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Like, I don't do all that no more because I recognise I didn't put myself here. Mm. That's all him. And me being quiet or hiding is me being ashamed of the person that's put me here. Mm. You're... We're gonna we're gonna pivot a little bit, okay? But we we're, we're still gonna be on the, along the lines of using the gift and excellence because mm. that's one one of the things that we spoke about off camera and while we we've been in this episode. You have a strive or you strive for excellence in everything that you do. Yeah. But you also love hard and go hard for the people. <laughs> Very much so. In that, how does that affect your relationships and friendships with people? It's hard. It's so hard because I don't do anything small. I don't do anything half-hearted. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hurt me in the past because I don't, I don't do it for return. Mm. But oftentimes people can abuse you or use you uh, for access. So I've been used for access to my parents. Mm -hmm. I've been used for access to what I have. Um, and it's different if I'm volunteering it, but it's horrible if you think someone likes you for you and then actually... They don't. They don't. Um, so, yeah, it's been difficult trying to find the balance. Mm -hmm. I think the key thing that I've learned is having the right people around you, mm -hmm. having the right village. I preach that a lot. <laughs> have the right village. Because mm -hmm. um, they're the people that will have eyes and ears when you can't. Yeah. 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 So, 
Yes, it's, it's a balancing act. One of the things that you said just then was you don't do thing, you don't do anything small, mm. which I think is really important to kind of note because when you had the prophecy about you singing, God was basically trying to tell you, I'm not going to do this thing small. Yeah, I just didn't listen. <laughs> and I don't even know if it's, I don't, the feeling I get is not that the fact that you didn't listen, is the fact that you knew that this could really come true. It was twofold. I, for me, I couldn't see it because I had no desire for it. Like, none. I was not trying to be in this. It, to be honest, when I first said to my dad, I'm going to join the team, he was like, why? Because it wasn't something I... As much as I did Donna McClurkin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't carry on it. I didn't carry it on. My dad tried to make me and my sisters the Clark sisters for years, and we were like, give it up. It's not happening. Because my passion was elsewhere. So it was really strange when God gave me that word because it was like, this isn't even in my five-year plan. I hear you, but it aligns with... It lines now, I can see it makes sense. But at the time, I was like, <laughs> I'm a dancer. That's what I said to him. I was like, maybe you mean dancing. You know, I'm trying to help him. But at the time, I was like, no, because the most singing I did was in the shower, like everybody else. <laughs> oh, gosh. One of the things you just spoke about was your five-year plan. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even ask the question. I know. Just, ah, yeah, no five-year plan. <laughs> so... In 2020, as you know, as part of your five-year plan, you wanted to get married. Yeah. Have a child. Yeah. How close do you feel to achieving those things and have your zero? <laughs> <laughs> so let me start. Have your experiences affected how you now see your future? I don't know if it's my experiences. I think I'm learning in my life is really not my own. Yeah. I have this. I did have a mindset that I <laughs> I realized that. God has really been working on me when it comes to control. I don't like things out of my control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is really silly when, it, when you no, think I, about I'm, it. When I'm, it comes I'm, to I'm like, yeah, I'm with you. If something goes wrong, I'm always like, there has to be a solution. Yeah, we'll if there it, isn't yeah. a solution, then I'm really bugged out because for me, it's like, what on earth? So yeah. with the five year plan, I just feel like it's, I probably get that organizational from my mum. My mum's mm. very like that. Like mm. everything was planned as a kid. We had like, schedules even summer holidays or some holidays were scheduled mm. we knew what we were doing when we knew if it was paint play if it was collages whatever <laughs> like she was very like they were color-coded just incredible administrator yeah, yeah yeah so that rubbed off on me and my sisters so i probably i am probably the hardest well maybe between me and carissa but i struggle very hard when things don't go to plan mm. so it's, I wouldn't say it's experiences. I think God has definitely directed my life in a certain way. So, mm -hmm. like, for example, you did mention, you know, I wanted to be married. That was the goal. I was engaged last year. Mm -hmm. Thought that was it. For finally get to just be yeah, a yeah. regular person. and A regular person? <laughs> no, because, you know, ministry is a lot. And yeah, you just yeah, want to yeah. do some normal stuff. Like, yeah. that doesn't really, you know, I was. that's why I said, yes, older Juanita is a part of me, but I'm still Juanita, a human being who wants to, you know, get married, have yeah, children, yeah, yeah. have sex, you know, yeah. the normal stuff that we all <laughs> hope for. Yeah, I'd yeah. hope you'd want it, you know, it's yeah. biblical. I mean, but that's my thing. So yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, um, ministry can be very lonely. So I was trying to come home to my parents or by myself. Like, I want someone to be like, hey, babe, you doing really good. Like, let me, let me give you a bath. Let me, you know. <laughs> okay, maybe a bit dramatic, but you know what I mean? I get you with you. Um, so I thought I was on my way to that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Yeah. Um, I called it off. It was a hard decision, um, but I'm happy with my decision. Okay. It was the right decision to make. Yeah. Um, I had to decide, you know, I think a lot of times we get in relationships and some people make decisions that are for the sake of social media. Mm. And if I was to go by social media, that would be, you know, that would be the most embarrassing thing. Cause yeah, of course, when I got engaged, it was a big deal. People mm. didn't know I was dating, all mm. sorts. Um, but I'm very big on, being transparent and being uh, aligning my morals. If yeah, I believe yeah. what I believe, you know, I'm not fake. Um, mm. I live a life that I believe is pleasing to God. And yeah. I try my best to aim to live a life to, that's pleasing to God. And um, anything that I feel is getting in the way of that or is not a true reflection of what I believe I stand for, mm. then I have to make decisions. And unfortunately I had to make a decision that was very painful for me, mm. um, but was the right decision to make. Uh, my parents had supported me. Um, leadership that did know about it had supported me. Family and friends have been incredible. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, I'm still healing, obviously. No, um, no one wants to come out of an engagement um, and three years, almost three years of a relationship mm. for it to end. Um, but God gave me a word, didn't like it either. Uh, gave me a word to suffer well. And he told me, he was like, you know, a lot of people don't teach about suffering. Um, the Bible says the, pre um, um, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the mm. glory that shall be revealed in us. Um, we want glory, but we don't want suffering. Um, if we look at Jesus, he suffered. Yep. Um, this guy went through 30 years of process for three years of ministry. We don't really talk about those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I recognise that this wasn't a case of, Winnie, you, didn't, you did this wrong. Cool, there are elements of things that I learnt, things that I probably will never do again. Mm. Um, but there were things that I recognised that this was bigger than me. Mm. This was like, God, God was saying, I love you too much for you to make that kind of mistake. Um, and that's a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. um, but it was easier because I had the support and I realised I was doing the right thing. One of the questions I was going to ask you off the back of that was, was, have you healed from that? And you kind of spoke about, you know, you're still healing. What, what in that did you learn about yourself having to call off such a big decision considering it's a part of your five-year plan? Mm -hmm. What did you learn about yourself? What was the main thing? Well, I'm nine months in mm -hmm. from the decision. Um, I would say I'm pretty healed. Okay. I, when I say healing, because I think that you have to be honest with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So it, I think I'm more so like, it's more so I'm waiting for last chapters to be closed. That's mm -hmm. where I'm at. Okay. Um, that's beyond my control. Yeah. Outside of that, I have accepted the process I'm in. I'm mm. just like, any time now we can be done. That's more so where I'm at. Um, what I would say, yeah, it, it, has, it really hasn't affected how I how move, move how forward. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think initially when I first came, I was very numb. I wasn't doing well. But at this point in my life, um, it was like, okay, I'll say it like this. It was funny. Someone asked me the other day, like, are you ready to get back on the dating scene? Mm. And I was like, I've been ready. I'm over this life. I told you. Like, that didn't change because this messed up. Like, who wants to stay single? Not me. My name is not Paul. I am okay. Um, but you can understand but, why people... But I understand why yeah, people yeah, yeah. are asking that. Um, and, I, you know, I, I make light of it. But what I'm saying is I, that, thankfully, God is good. Thankfully, it did not make me bitter to say, I don't want to ever do this again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, will I want to post it again? Probably not. not. <laughs> I probably will end up married with a kid and then you'll find out on social media. Just see pictures in the back of the head. Yeah. So <laughs> I, said, I said to God, the only way I would post it is I never want to rob him of that experience, especially if he's that, never been engaged before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will never take that from them. Um, but I can't lie. I'm not 100% sure I would yeah, let yeah, everyone yeah. know until I was married this time. Yeah. Because uh, it's just it's it's hard scary to deal with as well. in yeah, the yeah, sense yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Someone can break up and it's a normal thing. When I did it, it was it was rough. Like I remember doing a QA and a and someone was like, what did you do? You must have done something. And it was, uh, people just mean sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I realised that, you know, when I put the, it out there, it meant that people will have the right to ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like people, unfortunately, don't always know boundaries. Mm. Um, so I think that's the only reason why I'd be hesitant to do it again. But then there's a part of me that's like, I may be so in love and so happy about it and the difference of this time that I may look like a fraud and this video will mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so, um, but yeah, to answer the question, I think in terms of my plan, in terms of where things are at, mm. I still have it. I still believe that God is going to allow me to settle down one day and yeah. um, these scars will not even be remembered. Mm. I, I feel that because I honoured him in my choice mm -hmm. to walk away, I would be very shocked if God didn't uh, respond in the fact of showing me the opposite of what I had to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, that is. That, that's my faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In all that you do and in all of who you are, where do you find time for yourself? <laughs> and um, what do you consider to be your safe place for when things are good, bad or ugly? Cool. Um, so what I do to find time for myself, I, I've had to be more intentional. Recently, I've it's just insanely busy. Um, calendars work. We can thank God for our calendar. Because <laughs> when I tell you, I would be a mess. 
but no, so my administrator, uh, especially the latest one I have right now, Travis, he's incredible. He makes mm. sure that things are in my diary. He reminds me, so that helps. Um, sometimes I flopped because I'd always put things in the diary. Yeah. Um, so it looks empty and it's actually not. Um, but again, just being more um, responsible. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's really, you know, scheduling time. So like tomorrow, I don't have anything to do tomorrow. And I'm really happy about it because I've not had a day to myself. Now it's going to be filled with laundry, <laughs> washing. <laughs> But, you know, at yeah, least yeah. I know I've scheduled time to, you know, just do me. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about when good, bad and ugly, when those days kick in, I have some amazing people in my life. Mm. And I feel like if I start listening, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, no, don't do that. Should I just not do no, it? No, no, just... But there's some people I feel like need... OK, I'm going to try. Listen, but if I get, if I get in trouble, it's This is up to you, you know, I'm just... I'm sitting you're helping me. You're helping me. <laughs> All right, let me... I'll do this. I'll stick with my closest, closest friends because yeah. then I don't get in trouble. Oh, now you say closest, closest. Yeah, but they know who they are. Okay, cool. So cool. they can't be offended. But Everyone knows who they are. Okay, cool. Carry yeah, they, they can't be offended. Okay, you do your thing. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They all know. But um, there is, a, I would say, a core um, that have just consistently been there for me mm. and they are pretty much the outlet. So um, I would say my two, two closest, consistent... And I would, I try not to use best friends because best friends, I feel like... It gets techie. It gets techie. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I've experienced where I've done that in the past and it hasn't. But if I was to call my two best friends, um, it would be uh, Naomi McGann and it would also be um, Crystal. Mm. And those two ladies, I've had over 10 years of knowing them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we've got Tinder. Um, but I can literally say anything to them. Um, Nay is probably the person that I can literally go crash on her floor. My God child's there. We... I will forget about what world I'm in. Yeah. I can achieve in Birmingham, so it's great. It's away from London. I can just literally live my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just told them where you are. Sorry, Nay. Um, <laughs> why? She's not in Birmingham anymore. Yeah, she's not in Birmingham anymore, like, so it's fine. I'm good. I'm now you good. Told, Sorry. Now you told her that in Birmingham. Oh, God, what's, yeah. what's, what's, what's happening? What? <laughs> I'm really bad. It's your fault. <laughs> You're making me too relaxed. <laughs> no, OK. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm definitely going to get in trouble for that. But um, she's been consistent, always there. Yeah. I can literally tell her anything. I can tell her I don't want to be a Christian anymore and she's not going to panic and yeah, not be a Christian yeah, yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just going to hit me and go, OK, but it's going to get OK. Or do you need to come up? Yeah, yeah, do you need yeah. a breather? Um, she's always got a space. Her and her husband just welcome me and I can just be me. Mm. Um, Crystal, again, same thing. I spend a lot of time at house. We just sit there, literally take my shoes on the couch and watch Netflix, yeah, yeah, binge yeah. watch something. I listen to her to complain about how it's not medically correct on a film. Yeah. And yeah, we have a laugh. Um, she prays for me. She's mm. one that I can guarantee she's always going to pray at the end of a conversation if she knows I'm not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, another consistent. And we both love food, which yeah. is incredible. And dressing up. So we love that. Um, so I would say definitely those two. Tiffany, who I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. Um, childhood best mate, literally uh, been there consistently as well. And then I would say, in terms of going spaces away, I would definitely also say um, my brother and sister, Denny and Esric. Yeah. Um, my godchild's dead as well. They just recently had a baby. She went down to Raya. Mm. And recently, especially when I came back, I was at their house a lot. Mm. Um, I just needed a space. I'm just playing with their child and just, just forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what I was dealing with and what I love about them because someone could be like well you just came for my child and that's it yeah, yeah, yeah. they understood that that's what I needed in that healing space yeah. they didn't judge me they didn't think oh she don't care about us it's just yeah. about Jariah. um which you know I love them yeah. but they were just like whatever it takes whatever it, when it needs you know there were times that I'm sure she would be like I remember Daddy would be like my house is messy why are you coming now and I'd be like I just need to get away yeah, yeah, and yeah. she would just put aside her personal feelings of you know all right, I've got a one-year-old and my, my house may be not where that I want, but she needs a space right now. And I really respect that. And then just my immediate family. Yeah. Like, honestly, my sister, she wasn't well, but she's probably one of the strongest people I know. And even in her situation, found time to encourage me mm. or just say, come over the house and breathe or come play with Baymax, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I couldn't do it without her. Carissa, my sister, she would be like, she wanted a sweet, leave a sweet on my bed or mm. something. Just little things to make me smile, my parents were just amazing throughout the whole process. Um, so yeah, I would say those are the core. Like there was obviously way more than them yeah, yeah, who yeah, were reaching yeah. out and stuff like that. But those select few at that time was what I needed. Mm. My last question to you today. Oh. Is with where you're at in life right now, mm -hmm. what advice or encouragement would you give to yourself? Oh, to myself. That's the... So encouragement for right here, right now. Mm -hmm. oh. Keep going. Mm. Keep going. I think, 
last year into this year has been probably one of the most painful years I've had in a while. Mm. I would say there were days that I literally just was like, if I didn't know Jesus, I'd be like, you could take me already, you know? Mm. Uh, not suicidal, but just like, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good, you know? Let's, let's, let's do heaven. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm cool. I'm here for the sing continuously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever I want, streets of gold. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. I can fly? Yeah, let's, let's go for that. Um, so I would say to myself, keep going. I would tell myself, it will get better. Because I think, like, if I was to compare January to now, they're different. Mm -hmm. um, do I have down days sometimes? Yeah, like, you know, as I said, unfortunately, we're in a real world. So people, you know, people come up to me, like, oh, congratulations. And I'm like, dang it. Yeah, I'm not yeah, yeah. engaged anymore and I have to go through all that. Sometimes those become triggers mm -hmm. and you feel like, oh, this is embarrassing. Or, you know, you see people's life progressing. Because I think for me right now, I'm ready to live a life beyond the church stuff. Like, mm. I'm really looking forward to just settling down within me. Um, and so sometimes that is difficult, but I will say keep going and know that God hears. Mm. I'll say God hears you, God sees you, and God is with you. I've, that's been the biggest thing for me that has blessed me, that he's with me. Aldo, we need a Francis. Thank you very much. I really <laughs> Thank appreciate you. It. This has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has. I've really enjoyed it. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. This has been Conversation with H with the amazing Miss Winita Francis. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and look out for more content that we've got coming very, very soon.